Around 200 BCE, ancient people would flock to the ancient city of Herapolis, which was part of the Roman Empire in modern-day Turkey. Located on the top of the cave was what they believed to be the Gate to Hell, which was named after Plutonium, the god of the underworld, Pluto. Animals of all various sizes, from birds to bulls, would drop dead at the entrance or soon after, as the people believed the cave was thought to exhale the breath of death. Of course, more than 2000 years ago, this was quite the phenomenon to behold. My name is Kaylee, and today we're going to look into the mystery surrounding the Roman gate to hell and the scientific explanation. Officially, this place is known as Plutonium at Herapolis, or Pluto's gate in short. It was a well-known religious site in the Roman Empire. A Plutonian in ancient Greek was a sanctuary specifically dedicated to the ancient Greek god Pluton, better known as Hades, and later in Roman times the god Pluto. It's unclear when the temple was built or when the religious rituals at the site started. But what we do know is that the city of Herapolis was founded somewhere around the year 190 BCE by King Eumenes II, King of Pergamon, a Greek state. The city was known for its famous hot springs and, of course, it was known for this incredible temple with the mystical phenomenon. So imagine this. You are a citizen of the ancient Roman Empire 2000 years ago and you hear tales about the gates to hell where animals die once they reach the threshold and breathe in the breath of death exhaled by the mouth of the cave. Of course you pack up your belongings to travel to this cave and witness this phenomenon with your own eyes. While you stand there, you see priests walk in and out of the cave entrance while leading the animals to their death, and the priests were seemingly not being harmed by the powers of the cave. And thus, of course, as a person living in ancient times, you will believe the priests were divinely immune. It would have been like watching the sewer of Sharon, you know, the mythical ferryman that rode the souls across the river Styx to the underworld? <laughs> it's quite a sight to behold, I'm sure. It would have been like witnessing the power of the gods, true magic, or at least that's what it must have been like for the ancient people who traveled to this religious site. The Greek geographer Strabo described the phenomenon as the following. Every animal that passes inside meets instant death. At any rate, the bulls that are let into the cave fall and are dragged out dead. I threw in sparrows and they immediately breathed their last breath and fell. He did realize that the reaction was related to the emission of gas. He wrote, the space is full of a vapor so misty and dense that one can scarcely see the ground. Even though he knew it was a gas causing the animals to die, he kept being puzzled as to how the priests were seemingly unaffected, wondering if they truly were divine or if they were unaffected because they simply held their breaths. So at this point, I can hear all of you watching this video think, how is this possible? What is the scientific explanation? And most of all, how were the priests not affected by this at all? Well, first let's take a look into where the cave was built and how this specific location holds the key to answering the mystery surrounding the miraculous events that took place. So the temple is built on top of a cave that releases toxic gases, which is the reason why it was used as a ritual passage to the underworld. Scientists have discovered the full explanation of the mystery of this phenomenon. And of course, as you can imagine, there's nothing supernatural about this. They discovered that a fissure in the Earth's surface deep beneath the temple emits carbon dioxide in deadly high concentrations. Volcanologist Hardy Pfanz of the University of Duisburg Essen in Germany and a team of volcanologists found CO2 levels ranging between 4 and 53% at the mouth of the cave and as high as 91% inside the cave by using a portable gas analyzer. This, as we can all imagine, is more than enough to kill animals with ease. Below 5% of CO2, most mammals, including humans, will start having problems. 
at levels of 7%, this can lead to sweating, dizziness, elevated heart rate and more. Above a CO2 level of 7%, it would lead to asphyxiation due to the lack of oxygen and due to the acidification of the blood and the brain cells. Knowing this, it's not strange that the animals who were led into the cave would die within moments after entering it. But I can still hear you think, what about the priests? They didn't die. Thankfully, Hardy Pfanz's research led to an explanation. The difference in height of the animals and the priests were a key to the priests not being affected. CO2 is heavier than oxygen. Therefore, it settles lower, where it forms a sort of gas lake some 40 centimeters above the ground. The animals would be right in this gas lake, breathing in the full toxic fumes, while the taller priests would be above the gas and therefore not affected, or at least not as much. For instance, a bull with the nostril height at 60 or 90 centimeters would breathe in quite a bit of the toxic fumes and die quickly. Of course, priests could stand upright and some would even stand on stones to make sure they would be above the toxic levels of the Hadean breath of death. Although I'm pretty sure that priests would still hold their breaths as much as they could to be absolutely sure they wouldn't breathe in the toxic fumes and still die. And of course, as we all know, animals aren't able to hold their breaths. Fons also believed that the priests were aware of the fluctuations of the gas depending on the time of day. Recent research has proven CO2 levels to be the highest around dawn after a night of the gases accumulating inside. Since sunlight disperses the gas, it has lower concentrations during the day. It's still highly probable that many ritual activities in the cave were held at night, as there were a number of oil lamps found in the cave as well. Deeper inside the cave, the CO2 levels are at a constant, ranging between 86 and 91% at all times. Since there's no sun or wind that can enter this deep into the cave to affect the gas concentrations. The spectators who travel to the temple and would sit around it on the benches would see strong and healthy bulls being led into the cave by the priests. And within minutes, the priests would walk out, pulling the dead body of the bull out of the cave. The priests would be in good health still, and this would have been a testament to the power of the gods through the priests. A phenomenon that would have mesmerized the ancient spectators sitting on the benches around it. Even now that we understand how it all worked, it's still incredible that they figured this out in ancient times. But if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. Make sure it's on all uploads, all notifications, and make sure you have your notifications for the YouTube app on as well because otherwise you still don't get notifications. I've been uploading more and you don't want to miss any. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet then click the card in the upper right corner. Links in the, links in the description down below and I always put videos in my end card. I'd like to thank my highest tiered patrons Floyd, Barry, Vaughn, Jeff Henderson, DJ, Klaus Jepsen, Ricky, Ira Whiteside, Malius Flavus, Tom Barkwell, Dibbler666, Timothy P. Smith and Gerald Lamontan. And I would like to thank my channel members of the highest two tiers, Volps Volps and Ben Oppenheimer. Thank you so much for watching another video. I've enjoyed this one. It was fun to research and write. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm figuring out what my style is nowadays. I have no idea. <laughs> what even is a style? I do know one thing. Malibu pear is absolutely my favorite. It's too good. It's sweet. It's still a bit coconutty. It's Malibu. It's rum. It's alcohol. Like a gate to hell. Why? Why would you want to visit a gate to hell? How is that going to help you in your life? Like, oh, hey, uh, hi, Berta. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't come to your like dinner party next Saturday because um, I'm traveling to uh, the gate of hell in Herapolis because, yeah, I want to see a bull die.
once it enters a cave? Just for fun? Make that make sense. Mm -hmm.